Hey guys, welcome back to Time with Caroline. Okay, today I am going to be doing a challenge. Five dinners for only $100 you can get through the work week. Here are the rules for myself. It was one trip, one grocery store. I went to Trader Joe's and it could only be $100 total. As you'll see on my receipt, I actually ended up spending $76-ish, but there were a couple changes that happened that I want to make clear. I clearly like to cook a lot, so I do have a lot of common staples that you might not already have. So I've also included in the final price what you need if you did not have Dijon mustard, tahini, and apple cider vinegar, which are three ingredients that I use throughout the week as well. A couple other things that you might have that I also added into the total were honey, the udon noodles. I also got soy sauce and balsamic vinegar. I'm not including olive oil and salt and pepper into that total because if you don't own those things, I don't even know why you're watching this video. So I'm totally fine if you don't, but you need to have those. Those are staples out, so just go and buy them. So for ease of use, if you look in the links below, I included a complete grocery list of everything that you're going to need, as well as links to step-by-step -step directions for each of these recipes so that you can follow along and you don't have to keep scrolling through this video. So this is our first dinner of the week. We're doing a honey glazed chicken with farro, kind of like a nice salad. I got this inspo from Nathan's dad who made something very similar, which was a blue apron recipe. Okay, here's everything that you're going to need. We're going to start with a cucumber and tomatoes, of course. So get that on your board. Cut the cucumber in half and then you're going to slice out three to four garlic cloves for this recipe. And then go ahead and have all of your tomatoes. And then for the cucumbers, I pretty much just quartered all my slices to ensure that the bites weren't too big in there. Um, next, you're gonna take your garlic, peel it like you normally would, and then go ahead and roughly chop it. You can make it tiny bites if you like, but I don't always do that. I don't really care. It's fine if there are bigger chunks. I think they're kind of tasty, but up to you. Go ahead and take some parsley. They always give you a big pack, so just take a big handful of it and roughly chop it with your knife. I don't even de-stem it because it all kind of tastes the same. So make it as bite-sized as you'd like. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is make our cream, sour cream substitutes. All you need is about a fourth of a cup of plain Greek yogurt. It can be full fat. It's very delicious. And we're going to be adding about uh, the zest of a whole lime, give or take. You can also use a lemon if you don't have any. I used a few tablespoons of olive oil and then a large pinch of salt. And then you're gonna stir it all up until it's nice and incorporated. And then we did taste it and thought, mm, it could use a little bit more acidity. So I did also add about half of the juice of a lime and then we're gonna save the rest for our chicken. So only use half, stir, stir, stir. And then we're ready to actually cook up our farro. So heat up a pot of boiling water over high heat. And in the meantime, we're gonna make a honey glaze. So in a bowl, put together a few tablespoons of honey, the other half of the lime juice, and then about a fourth cup of a water. And then this part's optional. I added red pepper flakes for heat because I enjoy that. And then totally just go ahead and stir that up until it's well combined. Now we're ready for our chicken. So in a fry pan, just heat up a couple tablespoons of olive oil over medium heat. We're gonna add our garlic. I'm having a little bit of trouble, but just dump that into your pan. And when it's nice and hot and sizzling, we're ready to add our chicken breasts. I use about a pound and a half here, but you can certainly do more or less. Uh, since these are big pieces, I cooked them for about five to seven minutes. Make sure you flip halfway through. You want them to be browned. Um, I should have cut up these into bite-sized pieces to make this process go faster but I forgot, so then we went in and used some scissors to cut them up. Don't really love this method, I would just use a knife on a cutting board, but we were improvising and that's fine. So we're gonna make sure that all the pink is gone and then we're ready to boil our farro. So make sure you do that according to the directions. It should only take about four to five minutes to become completely al dente. Once our chicken is browned all over, we're gonna add our honey mixture. So just spoon that over it and you're gonna cook that for an additional two to three minutes. And then I am seen here dumping out my farro because it's done. So 
we're almost done with the recipe. Just strain the farro a little bit and then dump it right back into the pot. Then go ahead and add your chicken while it's still hot. And we're gonna add our tomatoes, cucumbers, and parsley. And then we're gonna add about three to four large handfuls of spinach right after this. So uh, don't worry, it's going to go down in volume once the spinach wilts. And we're gonna add about a half cup of crumbled feta to give it a nice salty, cheesy bite. So just stir that all up. And then I added the rest of the remaining lime juice. But then you're ready to serve. Just put into a bowl and then you can top with your cream topping and that's it. Dinner one is complete. I think it only took about 30 minutes. Honestly, it looks really delicious. We're gonna dive in, you know, how many servings we get out of it. Okay, the answer is four whole bowls and each bowl is about 430 calories. It's night two and we're making a quick udon veggie soup that should only take about 30 minutes. Okay, here's everything that you're going to need. It's actually a shorter list this time. First, I'm taking nine and a half ounces of udon noodles and boiling them in a pot of very hot water. They cook up in four to five minutes, so very quick, much faster than regular spaghetti noodles would. And then I'm also boiling a couple of eggs. We can have soft boiled eggs on there. They only need six minutes any longer and they're going to become hard boiled, so something to keep in mind as well. Here I am just peeling and chopping up about half an onion for our broth. You can totally use a whole onion, but for some reason Nathan is onion adverse, so I tend to scale back a little bit, but definitely use onion, so good in the broth. Now I'm just chopping up a couple cloves of garlic like we did for our last recipe, always a must. And then my noodles are already done. So I'm going to strain those before I go any further or else they will get too mushy. Also, I had a small casualty with my eggs, unfortunately, one of them leaked, but you know what? It's fine, they're still edible. Make sure you put it in a cold bucket of water or a bowl not a bucket so they stop cooking fully through i'm taking a carton of chicken broth and now adding that to our pot and we're gonna slowly put that over high heat and i'm adding a cup of water to that as well now back to our ingredients that we need i'm chopping up about eight to ten baby carrots feel free to use more if you'd like but i saved a lot of them for the rest of the recipes that we're going to be having and then i have some sprigs of rosemary just de-stem them and roughly chop them up a bit don't have to be really tiny pieces they are great seasoning for our broth so add all of those to the pot and we're going to slowly bring that to a boil right after we add a couple large handfuls of white cabbage. You can use red cabbage as well, but this is what I bought and it's pretty good. Add about six tablespoons of soy sauce to your liquid to give it a salty bite, and then bring it to a complete boil for mm, four to five minutes. As you can see, I am testing the carrots to make sure that they are nice and soft now. And then you're gonna bring it down to a simmer. I added one more cup of water, and then I added our udon noodles back into the pot. I also added a huge amount of kale that for some reason didn't get caught on camera, so apologies for that. And here I am just taking the shells off our eggs over some cold water that makes it a lot easier to peel. And then we're ready to plate. So get your noodles in the bowl. And then the hardest part is just slicing that egg nice and pretty. I don't know why I spent so much time on this, but whatever, it came out cute. And you're done. Day two done, only took like 20 minutes. Ooh, and we all have a lot left over. This recipe gave us six heaping bowls at 380 calories a serving. It's day three and we are making a chicken parm salad that was inspired by a sweet green bowl that I always get. Huh. Um, but this is a cheaper version of it, so we'll get started. Here is the list for the third dinner. All you need to do, I have about a pound and a half of chicken breast. This is our second pack. Prepare like a normal person. I just rubbed a little bit of olive oil onto each one and then sprinkled with salt and pepper. You're gonna put this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 45 minutes until it's cooked through and looking juicy. 
Um, I did change my sweatshirt and they're done. <laughs> the next thing you're going to do is make the quinoa. Just follow the instructions on the bag. It's often different, but you just boil some water, put in the quinoa, and let it simmer for a while. Okay, now you're going to chop up a head of broccoli. I left it in pretty big chunks because I think it tastes great like that. And then I have about a half cup of cherry tomatoes. This is the best part. I have a ciabatta baguette from Trader Joe's and I diced up about half of it and saved the rest for later, which makes a great snack. But these are going to be our croutons that add a really delicious crunchy bite. Okay, so now that that's all settled, I put the broccoli and the breadcrumbs on a tray, put some olive oil and salt and pepper on that again, and then in the oven at 430 degrees, kind of random, but it works. Stick that in the oven for about seven minutes and we'll return to that later. In the meantime, I have my chicken here. I'm just gonna slice it up into more bite-sized pieces. Should be really easy since it roasts in the oven for so long, it pretty much just falls apart. Now is the part where we make the delicious dressing and all you need to do is place a little bit of honey in a bowl along with a spoonful of Dijon mustard, a sprinkle of salt, and then some balsamic vinegar followed by olive oil of course. And then just whisk it up with a fork and that's all. Really delicious. Okay, my quinoa is done and fluffy, took only about 10 minutes, and the broccoli and croutons have been in there for seven. So I removed the croutons because they are done and crispy and I don't want them to burn, but the broccoli is probably not done yet, depending on how you like it crispy. So I just put it back in the oven for about seven more minutes, and then we're done with dinner. To assemble, just put the quinoa on the bottom, followed by a few handfuls of spinach. And then you're going to add all of your delicious toppings. So we have our broccoli florets, and then I'm going to be adding the chicken, of course, followed by cherry tomatoes, only on mine because Nathan is picky. And then, of course, those delicious croutons. And then that's it. You just add your balsamic honey Dijon vinaigrette and then sprinkle on a little bit of Parmesan Romano. All right, all done, ready to eat. Four bowls at 480 calories. Okay, it's night four and we are gonna make a big soup. It's gonna be a hearty tortellini, kind of like a minestrone vegetable soup. And I think it's gonna last us a couple days. Are you tired of hearing from me? <laughs> We're first gonna start with boiling a pot of water for our tortellini noodles. But in the meantime, I'm going to chop up some garlic yet again because I like garlic, everybody likes garlic. And then I also chopped up two Roma tomatoes. Honestly, just slice it any standard way you want into bite-sized pieces. Really no science to that. Then I have a yellow potato. I'm just gonna dice that up as well. I kept the chunks mm, sort of medium. It adds a nice chunky bite. I'm also gonna cut up some baby carrots yet again, getting a lot of use out of that item. And I make them pretty thin, so use your discretion. We all know how to chop things probably at this point. Okay, I am boiling a pound of tortellini noodles or whatever shortcut pasta you picked. And I'm making a lot of use out of this onion. It's going a long way because the last fourth of it is going into recipe five. I have some sprigs of rosemary that we're gonna drop in, and then also we're using parsley, so I just roughly chop that up once more. And then I checked on my noodles after about eight-ish minutes and they were done, so I drained them. Okay, right back in the same pot, we're gonna make the soup. So heat up a couple tablespoons of olive oil and dump in the onion and garlic. You're just gonna saute it over medium high heat for a couple minutes until it starts to get soft and fragrant. And then we're gonna add our carrots and tomato. You're gonna cook that for about three to four more minutes until those start to soften. And then I added a pinch of salt and pepper at this point and stir it up. Now you're gonna add two 32 ounce containers of chicken broth. I only had one at this point because I thought it would be enough. It wasn't. You're also gonna add two cups of water to dilute it and just create more volume for the soup. As you bring the soup to a boil, drop in your diced potato and your rosemary sprigs. Okay, you're gonna let it boil for 
mm, about three to four minutes. And then after that, bring it down to a simmer, add three fourths cups of that white cabbage. And then we're gonna add a whole can of white kidney beans or cannellini beans, however you wanna call them. And don't even drain it because that just adds more flavor to the soup. Dump it right in there. And then shockingly, we're adding some kale because we need to get our greens where we can and it wilts down. So I added some big handfuls of that. And that's pretty much it. All you need to do is sprinkle in some parsley and then put your tortellini noodles back in the pot. Keep your heat on low at this point so your noodles don't get mushy or turn the heat off completely. And you're ready to serve. So here I am just putting it in a bowl. If you want to garnish it for further, you can add a sprinkle of the Pecorino Romano cheese. All right, that's it. Took about 30-ish minutes. That's the end of night four. Six bowls, 415 calories. Day, day five for dinner, and tonight we're making salmon tacos, so we're using our most expensive item, and I'm pretty much just using up all the odds and ends from the rest of the week. Across the finish line, dinner five, we're gonna start with the remnants of our onion and just dice it and pull it apart into slivers this time. And then you're going to chop up your bell onion, make sure you take out the core. And then I'm gonna chop our cucumber that left over from recipe one into matchsticks and then of course i still had carrots left so i cut those long ways as well lots of parsley so using that up as much as i can and then in a medium a fry pan i'll heat up a couple tablespoons of olive oil and throw in your onions and peppers they are going to saute in there with a pinch of salt and pepper for about seven minutes until they are looking brown and crispy and soft like that and then remove it to a separate plate and we're going to heat up that fry pan again with another tablespoon of oil and put our salmon face down into it we're going to let that cook for about four minutes over medium heat and then i just directly flip it i added a pinch of salt and a tablespoon of honey drizzled over the top and then i don't know why i did this but you need to shred the salmon you can do it right in the pan and just remove the skin at that point and make sure that all the bits are cooked through mine were still a little pink so i did a couple additional minutes there to make our cabbage slaw in a bowl, combine some apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, and olive oil. I then added a small spoonful of mayo and mixed it up. Then all you need to do is add those carrots, some big handfuls of white cabbage, and that's it. Stir it up. To make our cream sauce, take the rest of the plain Greek yogurt, and we're going to include the zest and juice of about half a lemon. I also added a pinch of salt and just stir up. The last thing we need to do is heat up our corn tortillas, put it on the burner directly over very low heat, and after about 15 seconds, flip it to the next side and repeat that as many times as you like. It makes about eight tacos. This was the part where I was going to add avocado, but she got brown, very sad. The second one was also a little brown, but we salvaged half of it, so we used that. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. <laughs> so all you need to do is assemble, put the salmon in first with the peppers and onions on top, then throw on your cabbage slaw, top it with a little bit of cucumber, additional parsley if you'd like, then a little bit of the cream and a pinch of feta, and then I added hot sauce because that's my favorite, but not necessary. And finally, we're done. It took us about 40 minutes and we're ready to eat. This recipe made eight tacos at 250 calories each. All right, and that's it. Those were five meals for only $100. Let me know if you try it out. Again, all the links for everything you would need to complete this are in the description. If you like this video, subscribe, give it a like, and let me know what else you'd like to see. Have a great one.